You think uh, the PDP... So what needs to be done is to reach out, even including, even including uh, Barista Gulak himself. I'm sure that the chairman will reach out to, to him and other aggrieved members of the party to come back and support him in this, uh, in this mission. But as it is now, I mean, Mr. Miko was only talking about the fact that uh, uh, court processes were violated, that the PDP went to court to seek stay of proceedings that was struck out. So he doesn't understand how uh, Modi Sharif then went on to emerge as a chairman. Well, you know, I don't want to get involved in the issues of uh, uh, the court processes or the election uh, or, or the assumed uh, election of Mr. Gula, but I, I just want to refer you to one of the comments that Mwapi made. He, he asked uh, Mr. Miko, what processes produced this person as the chairman of the party? What processes? Well, you also heard him say and that... And he didn't they, answer it. But you heard him say that the court said it has to be zoned to the northeast, either the name Mr. Gulak or any other member within 14 days. Did the party comply with that? He didn't, he didn't also tell you that that, that, uh, that that case was equally appealed by the party, and that, that matter is still pending. But, but, you know, that's not the issue here. The issue is that the party has filled a position, and the position has been taken by His Excellency Amadou Sharif, and the party is now on a reconciliation uh, mission, and that is what is in, well, that's what's needed. We can't reverse uh, this. Now, like I said earlier, we in in this country and in Africa, we have to learn, we have to learn how to lose in grace. It is very important. Well, for for him, yeah. it's an issue. In fact, it is the issue because he thinks you can't place something on nothing. You said the matter has been appealed. So, are you not supposed to maintain status quo rather than go ahead and conduct elections for which you appealed? That's like destroying the rest. But, 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 but let me, no, no, let me remind you that, let me remind you that, uh, that Secundus is actually the deputy national chairman of this party. So in the absence of the chairman, we still have a deputy chairman who will conduct the affairs of the party. So he still has locals to do what he was doing, irrespective of what, is, what other distractions that are out there. But he was still the active uh, deputy national chairman of the party. So make us understand then, why did the party appeal? I mean, if you have a court action, you can't just leave it uh, lying, uh, I, I, I do. I mean, it's a, it's a, you have a civic responsibility to respond to someone from the court. But you, you didn't wait for that appeal to be determined, and then the party went on as though the appeal didn't exist. Once again, uh, he, even himself stated that in the other three of the, of the judgments, say that Gulak or any other person <coughs> from the Northeast, and mentioning Gulak was not uh, specific. It was just including him as a citizen from Northeast. From Northeast. It was not a declarative uh, judgment for, for Gulak. He said Gulak or any other person. And there's no question that... Uh, uh, the new chairman is from Northeast, so that requirement is satisfied. Mm. So you some know, of the responses, I mean, he talked about restraining order, uh, you know, preventing the then acting chairman of the party from operating with any of the organs of the party. Uh, what do you say to that? Because he says the action of the party has been in violation of those restraining orders. Well, well Mwape, those are issues for the court to resolve. Like I said, uh, Secondus had locus. He is still the active national deputy chairman of the party, and in the absence of the chairman, he has the constitutional right and obligations and duties to carry out the functions of the party. Mm. He was very particular about, you know, violating a court order, and that's what the reason we wanted to speak to it. It is interesting that you acknowledge that there was actually a case in court, and that your party is on appeal of that particular matter, which means that you acknowledge that there was actually a case in the very first instance. Well, I'm sure you know that the record of uh, PDP, we have a very good record of uh, abiding by court order. We don't have the penchant for disobeying court order. And I've not, I don't see where they have disobeyed court order. I've told you that uh, in the absence of the chairman, 
that the deputy chairman has the duties to assume the responsibility of running the party. It's, it's strange that you, you don't see this as, uh, well, disobeying court order. As Chamberlain reminded you, one would have thought that you waited for that to go on before you went on an appeal. I mean, you wait for the outcome of your appeal before you go on with this uh, process which has uh, uh, brought up uh, Mr. Modu Sharif as the chairman. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I, I was saying that uh, it's strange uh, you saying that the PDP doesn't violate uh, court orders. Uh, a while ago, Chamberlain reminded you of uh, your appeal, which you told us uh, you've gone ahead to appeal that uh, uh, judgment. Shouldn't you have waited for the outcome of the appeal before you went on with this election? Well, I mean, there was no court order restraining PDP from, from filling a vacant position in the party. There's no court order to that effect. So there can be a vacuum in the operation of the party. Uh, the party has exercised its rights within its constitution to fill a position. And the, the, the chairman that emerged went through the process, went through all the processes, and he's now the chairman. So we have moved on. <laughs> Yeah, and again, a while ago, you reminded us that there can be a vacuum because you have uh, Mr. Uche Sakandos there who can always act as the chairman of the party. If you thought and you felt comfortable with that, then you should have waited for the outcome of the appeal. But let me, let me remind you that it, since the uh, resignation of uh, Maozu, the, the last chairman, the North East had had, they've had eight months to produce a candidate. If they had come to the party with one candidate, that this is a unanimous candidate from, from Northeast. We will not even have all these issues that, that we are discussing now. But they, 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 they didn't do that. So all the, all the arguments you are hearing is part of the, part of the robust uh, democratic tendencies of the party, that people are engaged, people want to take over their party and, and move on. We can't wait for them forever to decide who uh, their candidates uh, should be. And after all, everybody in the party is a stakeholder in the party. You Are you know, very Go talking ahead. about? Sorry, very quickly there. Talking about stakeholders, what's the place of the PDP governors in all of this? Well, if I heard you if I heard you correctly, they are part of the caucus, and the chairman went through that process. Uh, How much influence do they exert in the emergence of a national chairman? How much, how much what? Influence. Well, I mean, these are internal uh, workings in, in the party. <laughs> in the party. They are Mr. stakeholders in the party, uh, just like, the, just like a, any other member of the party. So, uh. Well, we understand that the, those same internal workings of the party, at the moment, appears as though, because as we see today, PDP may lose... 20 senators and 50 reps. We also understand that uh, the state chairman and BOT voted no at the caucus meeting. Well, I saw that in the headlines, but like I said, these are all speculative. Uh, I think with the effort that the national chairman is putting forth within 48 hours of his emergence may resolve all those issues. You know, when you have an election process, there are grieving moments, and it takes time for those things to normalize. So these are all normal things in, in an election process. So those things will be taken care of. I'm sorry, what, what part Especially is with the attitude that the chairman has. What part is speculative here? The fact that uh, the state chairman and BOT voted no, or that they may lose 20 senators or 50 rep and 50 reps? What part of it is speculative, as you say? Because the BOT, some, not all of them, as you say, uh, agreed with him. State chairman also voted no. And then 20 senators and 50 reps may be on the walkout. So what part of that is speculative? But I'm, I'm, also, I'm, also, sure, I'm also sure that you, you heard the results that emanated from NEC. 
where 60 of the 71 members voted to ratify the chairman. Chairman. Okay, could you then tell us when, when is the party going to have their national convention? I don't, it's not within my powers to, to, to speak on that. Whenever they, based on the constitution and whenever they are ready, they will announce that just like they announced uh, this uh, NEC meeting and uh, those things will take its course. Now the national chairman has said that the PDP will unseat Buhari in 2019, but some people are not very confident that he will be there by that time. That's the PDP national chairman. What do you say to those people who are skeptical that this national chairman will last? Well, I like the confidence. I saw the headline. I like the confidence. That's to show you the capacity that he's bringing to the table. You know, and uh, such optimism is what we need. You know, to rebuild the confidence of members. Uh, the, the, all these other distractions will be taken care of, but I, I, I have absolute confidence that the actions of NEC, Caucus, uh, uh, that the chairman will not disappoint uh, 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 we, the party members. You think that the chairman will be in place till 2019? You're sure of that? I, I don't see why not. Politician, you're, you're always optimistic in almost everything. Well, Mr. Kuleta Dinibu, thank you for talking to us this morning. Well, we will be back in a minute.